Lord giving all glory to God who keeps us moving in this uncertain world. For today's message I would like to pray, take a phrase from what apostle Paul had used for when he wrote the epistle to the Corinthians that is from 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 24 run in such a way that you may obtain it yes brethren we are in a race and we have to run this race faithfully i remember when i was 10 years old watching television in 1988 the famous seoul olympic games the world was looking at an event looking forward to an event that was the 100 meter race and uh, there were two famous names on, on those days car louis at louis and ben johnson well in this race ben johnson backed gold beating all the previous world records and there was standing ovation there was joy all over the stadium and people standing him congratulating him hailing him for the victory which he had won in that race and uh, but soon that race the joy which he had in his life uh, that was for a very small period and he was stripped from this goal because he was tested positive for the steroid use and he was disqualified yes this was a race where rules were compromised and hence Ben Johnson was disqualified which caused shame to the entire nation. Today I'm going to speak about a similar race which started well but for some reason the athlete didn't reach the finishing point. Imagine how awkward it looks when an athlete starts a race and amidst the field in between the field he says enough is enough I am quitting. Do you know whom I am speaking speaking about talking about? Yes the answer would you would find it in galatians 5 verse 7 apostle paul writes to galatians with this question you ran well who stopped you from obeying the truth well when i was reading this passage and uh, the spirit of god prompted in me saying that this is about you well we know it was about the galatians and he was addressing to the galatians but when we sit before the word of god and when we hear from him the spirit of god prompted me saying it is about you you started your race but now what happened you started well in your faith journey but now what happened you started well in many of your decisions and resolutions and now what happened many things in your initial days is not seen now and uh, now there is no zeal of doing the lord's work which was the zeal which was there in your initial days your zeal in supporting the servants of god your zeal in supporting studying the word of god and many other things which you were once zealous now what happened Do you remember those days when you would try your level best to share the love of God with people around you? Remember those days when you would try traveling in bus and you would try your level, you would try to put your effort to share the gospel to the person sitting behind you. Do you remember those days? I remember those days when I would travel and I would try my best to convey the message of love of God to people around. Do you remember those days when you were present for the saints unconditionally like a faithful steward doing the master's will? Well, you have been doing all this. But now what happened? And this is the question which Apostle Paul is asking Galatians and the Spirit of God asking us to. You were in this race, you started the race well, but now what happened? somewhere in between something happened that you turned back and now the zeal which were which was there initially is not seen nowadays well in this passage apostle paul highlights uh, different reasons and these reasons can be reasons in our life too we may have many things to say in our life this happened because of this i am not doing this because of this because of this person because of so and so incident i am not able to do what i am supposed to do i had to quit this race because of this incident and very beautifully apostle paul in the passages of uh, galatians 5 and the verse which we read below we read uh, he highlights three things which were which would have been a reason for the galatians where he is asking this questions and this question when he is asking to them can be a reason why we have failed in our race too 
Well, in verse 10, he says, maybe someone has troubled you. Maybe someone has troubled you. In our life of faith, in our Christian life, in our journey, many a time it so happens that we get disheartened by people around us. Maybe our family members, maybe people around us in the assembly, maybe the elders, maybe the evangelists. We would have often heard about people saying, because of that person I am not doing this. I was doing this work before, but now I am not doing because of him. He disheartened me. His words cut me through. His words put me down. He discouraged me. He demotivated me. And because of that, I am no more in this race. Many a time we would have heard words of this sort from people around, from men and women and saint and from godly uh, children of God. We would have heard such statements. Maybe someone has troubled you. That's what Apostle Paul says to the Galatians. And uh, we need to thank God when the Spirit of God says, whoever has troubled you will bear his judgment. So that's not a reason. If someone has troubled you and you are not in this race now, the Word of God very clearly says that no, it is not because of that person. That person is not the one who has put you in race. If he or she has troubled you in some way, leave it in the hands of the Lord because he will bear his judgment and God will take care of him. By but you continue in the race. Now when, when verse 13, when we come, we see uh, Apostle Paul again mentioning, do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. Well, what does Apostle Paul, what is Apostle Paul trying to say here? Many a time, when we are, when God has liberated us, when God has freed us from the bondage of sin, and when we are as a free man and woman and in the sight of God, when we are in the fold of God, in the church of God, Apostle Paul here says, if you buy, in verse 15, if you bite and devour one another, what will happen? It is not going to do any good to anyone. It is not going to do any good to anyone if you bite and devour one another. Now the liberty which we have got in Christ, in the, in the church of God, in the fold of God, we see in many places people e biting each other, literally in that sense we can say, uh, trying to cause harm to others, not realizing the fact that, that we are all children of God and we need to have a standard life. But many a time our life have come to this level that people who are around us, we feel that they are biting us, they are putting us down, they are tearing us down and we start going back in the same way as they are. Still biting each other, devouring each other, that is not going to do good to anyone. When Apostle Paul says here that do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, it means if someone whom we are interacting with, if there is someone who is devouring us, who is biting us, who is causing us harm, and if we lose a focus from the race and get back to him with the same attitude, well, there is no option for us to leave the race and to go behind him biting and devouring and causing him harm to. And the word of God reminds us it is not going to do any good to us, nor it is going to do any good to that particular person. So coming to the second point that we should not use the liberty as an opportunity for the flesh and we have to keep focus, we have to keep ourselves focused on the race which God has entrusted to us. In verse 16, walk in spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Well, this may be the commonest reason why we are not in the race these days. As I was mentioning to you earlier, we had started the race with mud zeal. Now what has happened in latter days, or say 10 years from the time we began this journey, the faithful journey, now after 10 years, after 15 years, looking back as to the zeal which we were in, now what is the zeal, what is the percentage of zeal, now it has come to a level where we are nowhere in, this, uh, nowhere in that field, nowhere in that track. It is because that we have fulfilled the lust of flesh. Once we were focused, we had a goal, we were looking on to our Lord, we were running that race, just focusing our eyes on Him. 
but of late what has happened is we started looking around to the world and we know the world is full of lust satan is there showing those things to us and giving importance to of those things to us highlighting those things to us that our eyes our mind our body our soul is diverted i don't want a diverted to it i don't want to mention all those things because we are all familiar with it many things in this life many things in this world when we know about when we read about the temptation which satan had posed before our lord jesus christ we see he took him to an exceedingly high mountain showed the things of the world in uh, the scripture we read we have to set our mind on the things above being on the earth now what satan has does is what satan has done is that he he is taking us to exceedingly high mountain he is taking us to very in a high position and making us to look down that's exactly the opposite of what god expects from us being the temporal residents of this world when we say when we preach that our citizenship is in heaven what satan has done is um give, bringing all the lust of the flesh to be taking us to high positions exceedingly high positions and making us look down to the world and where our eyes our body is lusting behind the things of the world there are many things i don't want to mention about it and um, because of this reason our focus has changed from the race and from the position where we were in walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh what apostle paul is trying to say here is once we walked in the spirit we walked in the ways of the lord we walked with the lord as enoch walked with the lord but suddenly in some place in some areas we have diverted we have moved our focus we have changed our attitude and we are walking in the lust of the flesh well this may be the three reasons why we are not in the race now but when we come to second timothy chapter 4 verse 7 uh, apostle paul says here i have finished the race finally there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness well apostle paul in his life he could have also said the same excuse oh my dear brethren there are many who had troubled me and that's the reason why i had to quit but he did not say so he was not bothered about the people who troubled him he just kept on moving he just kept on running the race and at his end time he could say i have finished the race and that is what god expects out of us too we may have people around us troubling us stopping us and uh, demotivating us discouraging us well these people are not the ones who have kept us in this race but we have to look onto the lord who have assigned us the stars and we have to do it faithfully well apostle paul would have said that um, there were apostle paul could have said many uh, apostle paul had many areas in his life where he had the liberty to do many things in his flesh but he was concentrating he was just focusing on to what the lord had entrusted to him he did not use the liberty of his flesh liberty of all the good things which he had he did not use the liberty of his scholarship uh, of about his scholarly uh, godly uh, attributes which god had given to him he used it for the glory of god using uh, your flesh do not use it as a liberty as an opportunity for the flesh but look use it for the glory of god and thirdly walking in the spirit apostle paul when we read his uh, his words in the different epistles we know he could have used many things and he could have many things he could have walked in the ways of the world but he interested himself walking in the spirit of the god spirit of god now he says finally there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness and this is the reward which god is going to give all of us we will need to look on to him we need to look on to the crown the reward which our lord in his appearing would be giving to all of us this world would be hardening this world would be discouraging this world will give you so many things which wherein we may not be in a position even to move even for a bit even for a second but just let's look on to the lord may god's name be glorified